I'm going to go ahead and assume that most of y'all have no idea what the Scott Fishbowl is, the Scott Fishbowl Fantasy Football League. I'm going to explain it to you first because the draft is happening right now, and I want to go pick by pick of my picks in the Scott Fishbowl, give you a little bit of analysis on it, what I was thinking, and um, just get you up to speed. So the Scott Fishbowl is named after Scott Fish. He's like a, he's an industry leader, basically, in the Fantasy Football League. And he has this massive draft or this massive league called the Scott Fishbowl every year where he pulls in basically every single analyst in the fantasy f- football space. And I think it's 2,000, over 2,000 people at this point. And he fills the rest of the spots up with fans. And I think the wait list is over like 20,000 to get into the Scott Fishbowl now. So there's high demand, which means a lot of you guys probably know what it is at this point. The draft settings uh, are crazy. He switches them every year. They always have a lot of nuances and a lot of crazy things involved with them. So we'll go into the actual draft settings first before we go through the team so that you guys have a little bit more context because context is key to understanding the terrible picks that I made along the way. So here are the uh, the rules. A lot of them are normal, but here are the ones that you need to know uh, that make it a little bit weird. The quarterback scoring is always crazy. It's always a super flex. So you start two quarterbacks. There's a bonus for being over 66.6% completion rate in a game, and then a negative bonus if you are under that. You also get 0.5 points per completion, negative one point per incompletion. And basically what that means is you want accurate quarterbacks, okay? You want quarterbacks that aren't going to be throwing 58% completion rates. You want quarterbacks that are pinpoint. Uh, doesn't necessarily need to be long shots down the field, but minus four point for an interception. So if you're a wild, sporadic, like Jameis Winston type quarterback, you are going to have problems in this league. And he always has crazy scoring settings like this. I remember last year I had, uh, I know I had Tom Brady and I had some, I, I remember games where the scoring was so crazy that Tom Brady put up like 50 points. And in that same game, I had maybe like Baker Mayfield score me like negative seven points. The scoring settings are crazy. So they can win you or lose you your week and the league overall. Um, outside of the quarterback stuff, there is half a point per first down. It is half PPR. Tight ends are super premium as well. They get an extra half a point per first down. They get an extra half a point per reception. You can draft kickers as well. You get one point for a made field goal, one point for a made extra point, and then decimal scoring. So if it's a 37-yard field goal, you get 3.7 points for that. Um, so they could be used as flex plays. So basically what you needed to know is that quarterbacks need to be accurate. They also get 0.5 per first down. So rushing quarterbacks get a little bit of a bonus as well. As far as skill players goes, everyone gets 0.5 per first down. Tight ends get the double premium on both reception and first down. So they're obviously very important as well. Now here's my team. I started off at the 102. That was the pick I had. This is also a third round reversal. So after you finish your first two rounds, it reverses. You see, I went 102, 211, and then I had the 311. So it kind of put me in a little bit of a blender. I didn't even know those were the rules when I started to draft. So JT at the 102, Josh Allen was the 101, obviously. This is super flex, so they are super premium on quarterbacks, and those type of quarterbacks can you know go off for 50 points in a single week. I just kind of wanted to share up my RB1. Uh, Allen is the clear 101, so had he not gone one, I would have went with Josh Allen. The tough part about this league is you play um, the first 12 or 13 weeks as a regular season, and then it's basically elimination style where the last five or six weeks, you need to be in the top half of the scoring in order to continue moving on. So you're playing against everybody that's remaining after they play their normal fantasy leagues. Jonathan Taylor has a bye in week 14, I believe, as the Colts do, which is going to be a problem for me. But I just said, fuck it, man. This is a free entry league, obviously. Uh, it is all for charity. Um, all of this is to raise funds for uh, it's Scott Fish's charity, but I believe they just have donations going around to a lot of different places. I'll link the website if anybody wants to donate down below. So I don't draft too, <laughs> too seriously. I mean, it's one in 1,200 people or 2,000 people, whatever. The chances of you winning are so fucking small that I'm just, you know, I'm taking a little bit of risk drafting the guys I like, and you know it's hard not to like Jonathan Taylor. So we took him. I also love Dalvin Cook at the 211. Uh, I want to have some shares of him this year, and to be able to get him all the way down that far is pretty sexy to me. Uh, how did he drop that far? Because quarterbacks go early, they go often, and they go crazy in this league, which you know makes sense as to why these guys fall so far. So we went RB, RB off the rip, and that gave me a little bit of leeway to kind of just sit on the running back position for a minute. And now we're like, listen, Quarterbacks are the most valuable position probably in this league. I thought I had the 302. I thought about taking Matt Ryan at the 211, but I was like, I can get him at the 302. Didn't know his third round reversal. So I was like, fuck. I thought I was going to have to take like Tua as my QB1. Uh, turns out it wasn't the case. He dropped to me at the 311, and I was 
fucking pumped about it. I just think this Colts offense in general um, is going to be so efficient and run so smoothly. And I think they're actually one of the best value bets this year to win the Super Bowl. Uh, on BetUS right now, they're currently plus 2,500. So 25 to 1 odds to win the Super Bowl. Um, and if you go on BetUS.com right now or BetUS or whatever this fucking site is, BetUS, and you use promo code BDGE when you first deposit, they're going to give you a 100% deposit match on whatever you put down. So I love the plus 2,500 on the Colts. I mean, just as a team overall, I think they're a really good team. Like, I think they're very underrated on paper, but then you get to look at their division. The Jags, the Texans, and the Titans, there's not an easier path to just locking up a... Yeah, they could be the number one overall seed. They could be the fourth best team in this conference and still get the number one seed, very much like the Titans were last year. So I absolutely love those fucking odds for the Colts. And again, this league highly incentivizes accuracy and inaccuracy, not deep plays. So Matt Ryan, I think, will thrive in the Scott Fishbowl. Sure, he can't like pinpoint a 50-yarder downfield anymore, but he'll connect on like 18 short throws per game in this offense. This is going to be a highly efficient, time-sucking, funneled offense between Matt Ryan, Jonathan Taylor, and Michael Pittman. And yes, them having a week 14 bye is going to absolutely uh, crush me. I wasn't really thinking about that when I drafted, to be honest with you. So we went Matt Ryan in the third, Darren Waller in the fourth. I mean, this was kind of an easy pick for me. All the top tight ends had gone off the board between it was like Waller and then Schultz was left. This is a major, major tight end premium league again. Um, so I wasn't trying to get too cute here. Just give me a good-ass player at tight end. Let me roll with that for the rest of the year. This is going to be a shootout division with KC and Denver and the Chargers. Um, Adams just makes the entire offense better. I know he's going to take a ton of the targets there, but he also makes the entire offense better. They're going to be on the field longer. They're going to be running more plays. I'm here for it, man. And uh, more scoring opportunities overall. Last year, Darren Waller uh, had an absolute shit year. Absolute shit year. But in these scoring settings, he was like, he scored basically as many points as like the wide receiver six in fantasy in these scoring settings, okay? So I took Waller at the 402, and then I'm back up at the 511. I took Deshaun Watson. Here's the thing. I was up on the clock, and news broke probably like an hour or two before the, the reports about how like Watson is probably going to get a four to six game suspension. And again, I've been saying it all offseason that it's really stupid to try to project what he's going to get because we sound like idiots. Like all, you know, we're like, oh, he's not going to get that big of a suspension. Oh, he's definitely going to miss the entire year. Oh, we're back to four to six games. So I was like, all right, that was the most recent report that came out and I'm a fucking moron. So I just bought into it and I was on the clock at that point. And I'm like, this is major upside here. If I can lock down Deshaun Watson as my quarterback two at the 5'11". Again, this is a free to play. Like there's nothing on the line actually here. So this is the type of league I would take more risks in. And Deshaun Watson at the 5'11" where you need upside towards the second half of the year, just made a lot of sense. So we secured our first two running backs, our tight end, and our two quarterbacks. Those are easily the most important three of four positions that you need to have in this league, which led me to just rip off wide receivers here, okay? It's basically just half point for wide receivers. You could say half point for first down short, but running backs also get that, so that's no sort of like leverage. There's no sort of uh, positive for the wide receivers. Um, so basically what I did is, you know, I, I took Pittman, I took A-Rob, and I took Judy in the 6th, 7th, and 8th. I thought all three of those guys I got really fucking good value on. Love the Pittman-Ryan stack. Y'all know I'm in on Allen Robinson this year. And Judy, uh, Sutton was off the board. I like Sutton more than Judy, but I'll take Judy in the 8th all fucking day. I want pieces of that Denver offense, as many of them as I can get. And he was the cheapest, most attainable, and the one sitting there looking like a snack in the 8th round. So after those three wide receivers, we dip back into the running back and quarterback pool with uh, Chase Edmonds at the 9-11 I thought was fucking awesome. We're starting to see a lot of people around the industry get a lot higher on Chase Edmonds. Me and Noah have kind of been yelling about him for a minute now um, about how we think he has real like, you know, RB1 top 15 fantasy upside this year in this offense as the main guy, as the pass catcher back there, and as the guy who got the most money. So him is my RB3. I'm super happy with uh, Davis Mills. I obviously need a quarterback to kind of supplement Deshaun Watson uh, while he is serving his suspension. And Davis Mills was was actually pretty fucking accurate last year okay he, he he had some games where he was really high upside uh, a lot of yardage some touchdowns and he was accurate so he won't kill you in this league I'm not expecting him to be like a top five quarterback but as long as you're not giving me negative fucking nine points I'm cool with that and this isn't you know it's not a Texans offense where they're slinging it downfield he's gonna income he's gonna have a lot of incompletions because of it he's not a big risk taker necessarily so I felt safe with Davis Mills here and then Ramondre is an easy pick for me man in this format uh where, where it kind of incentivizes upside late in the year right probably won't need him much early on because we have the running backs kind of early and often but could see huge upside over the second half of the year you know I made the video yesterday about nine awesome fantasy uh, nine awesome football players that won't be great in fantasy and Damian Harris is one of the guys on this list so kind of hedging against Harris with 
Ramondre Stevenson here, and uh, he was my 11-11, so I absolutely love that spot for someone who has second half of the year upside. David Njoku at the 12-02. I wish I had gotten a second tight end earlier than Njoku. I don't trust David Njoku with anything in my fucking life. He's been, like, bad at football for five straight years, but... If Watson's back on the field semi-early, then David Njoku can be, uh, I don't know. Austin Hooper's not there, so maybe, yeah, I have no good arguments here for David Njoku. I'll just shut my mouth and move on. Isaiah Spiller is a guy that I like this late, 13-11. Uh, if something happens to Eckler, he obviously has really, really high handcuff opportunity. I think he's also going to be a standalone value player. And after that, we just went right back to the wide receivers because you have to start a minimum of three wide receivers in this league. You could start all the way up to seven with the flex spots. So there are four flex spots, basically. And that's why you need to have depth here because obviously there's buys, there's injuries, there's busts. So I went with Jameson William at the 14, <coughs> 1402. Again, a league that incentivizes second half of the year upside. If Jameson Williams breaks out from weeks like 10 to 14, I'm going to be really happy I made this pick here. If he doesn't, whatever. Uh, then I just started kind of stacking players that I think are in good offenses with, uh, you know, kind of diminished funnels as far as like targets go give me jameson crowder i want some pieces of that buffalo offense that aren't necessarily like first five round picks that i didn't have to spend a lot on we have beasley out we have um emmanuel sanders out those are both slot guys and jameson crowder is a slot guy in this offense so i think there's a realistic chance that jameson crowder has you know uh, the same amount of targets as gabe davis maybe like 80 percent, but i'll take that in the 15th round and then after Crowder, you know, we had KJ Osborne, Sammy Watkins, Paris Campbell. Nothing I'm overly excited about. But if we believe, like what I've been saying, that the uh, Minnesota offense is going to be more pass friendly, more pass happy, then KJ Osborne obviously benefits. Watkins, I don't fucking know. Maybe he'll finish as like the wide receiver 27 fucking three times for me or something. Um, Paris Campbell, you know, drink, rinse, repeat. Uh, just have phenomenal training camp, big camp, whatever. That's uh, whatever. Just give me more fucking indie players. Is basically my point here. But that's the team. Um, for me, fading wide receivers, I'm really happy with how the roster turned out overall. Uh, most of this will hinge on whether or not uh, Watson is on the field this year after four to six games. If he ends up getting the year suspension, this team is obviously shot because I don't have a third quarterback. If he misses like ten games, I'm probably shot as well. So that report came out. I was on the clock. I mixed the upside with the risk there, you know, risk reward, and I thought it was worth it. But the rest of my team I love. Taylor, Cook, Matt Ryan in this format, Darren Waller, uh, Pittman, Robinson, Judy, Chase, Ramondre. Um, you know, if one thing breaks right for either Spiller or Ramondre Stevenson, those are guys I could put as my second flex in this lineup. So I like it. Obviously, the depth is tough to come by. This is a very, very large league because waiver wires shut off after the regular season portion of it uh, wraps up. Let me know what you guys think of, uh, of the squad, of the roster. If you guys are in the Scott Fishbowl, you can comment your teams down below and let people fucking rip on you as well. What do you think about the strategy? What do you think about, I don't know, anything? What are you passionate about? What are we crying about today? Whatever you're crying about, let's have a therapy session in the comments down below. All right, I'm going to stop before this turns into a therapy session. I love y'all. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you <coughs> tomorrow. Thank <laughs> you.